is this guy that fought on the undercard, Zabit Magomed Sharipov. Holy <laughs> is this guy. He's he's <laughs> phenomenal. An animal? He, he's uh, one of Mark Henry's guys down oh. in New Jersey. Okay, that's good. And, I uh, like Mark Henry. From Dagestan. Dana White, Sean Shelby, who is next? Greetings, dear friends. Today we would like to talk about a very rare talent that represents the mixed martial arts of an exceptional and unique caliber, about an MMA fighter of international level, and as many argue, one of the biggest what-ifs the professional sport has ever seen. Take a seat as you are about to see the one and only Dagestani ninja Zabit Magomed Sharipov and his full story. Please don't forget about the likes, comments with four words and subscribe to the channel. Here we go. Childhood and early years. All right. Look, speaking about Zabit, I'm not going to say some generic stuff like he was a good and excellent guy, you know. I'll put it this way. As humble as he was, he is still the same guy, right? Unfortunately. Look, I'm saying unfortunately. Fame didn't change him at all. Why unfortunately? He could be of great benefit to the young kids who do sports. But he is so shy that he doesn't want to promote kids. Or like our federation of Wushu Sanda. But he came from Wushu Sanda. It's one of the most beautiful sports there is. Because it has everything. Judo throws, boxing technique, kicks from Taekwondo and wrestling. Well, there's a little bit of wrestling in the professional wushu as well. Zabit Akhmedovich Magomek Sharipov was born on March the 1st of 1992 in the town of Hasabiyot, situated in Dagestan. According to the information in the open access, his nationality is Avar. As it is usually the case for kids from such places, the boy got introduced into the sport rather early. At a younger age, Zabit was interested in many disciplines related not only to martial arts. Among his passions were freestyle wrestling, kickboxing and football, the classes of which he attended in his out-of-school time. Closer to the age of 10, thanks to consistency and genuine interest in the physical activity, the kid was showing great results in all these sports which earned him a countenance of seniors. Young Zabit was doing great both on the football field and sweaty mats, doing some kind of exercises. Coaches highly appreciated the boy's level of preparation and saw a great potential in him. Just two years later, when the future youth's idol and a role model turned 12, the guy enrolled into a famous school of martial arts called Five Directions of the World, run by Gusin Magomayev. Brother, I've been training since childhood. I don't know. It was your decision, right? Well, as far as I remember, like, since school, since childhood. You know, like, I was doing everything. Football, kickboxing, school. In the second grade, you said it was later on, sixth grade. Before that, I was wrestling and playing football. Frankly speaking, that was the moment when football in the life of our hero started to come second. The boy's passion for hard workouts in the gym was stronger, and in terms of the future, such a change of focus towards martial arts looked more beneficial. Interesting fact, at a certain moment, this school that Zabit enrolled in was called by the experts as the Shaolin School of Dagestan. However, to attend workouts, Magomed Sharipov had to have a long trip by foot on a daily basis, spending a couple of hours getting to the gym. This didn't really sit well with the boy's parents, who not only worried for him, but also for his academic progress, which didn't stop the kid from doing what he loves despite any difficulties. The next lines come from the book of Megamed Natsahanov, Dagestani Ninja. In his childhood, Zabit often asked his father to move him to the city of Hasavyot with all the needed facilities for education and sport. Due to the fact that they didn't have any accommodation in the city, Zabit's uncle put in a lot of effort for his nephew to get into Russia's famous boarding school called Five Directions of the World. It happened in 2003. Zabit passed the tough test with honor and became a student of a private fighting school. 
he lived in a cave. That's what his peers called his place of permanent residence in this elite school of martial arts. Throughout five years in this facility, the young man has been training and sharpening his skills with renowned martial arts coaches at the head, Gusein Sagotovich Magomayev. We should also mention that in childhood, Sabit was a very active and jaunty kid. His early days were no less active than current ones. One could say that he was raised by the streets like his peers. Namely, the streets hardened his character as no days could go by without brawls or fights. Sabit often came out as the winner, going up against the older guys who were not one, but two or three years older than him. Being a teenager, Sabit started to have his first fights. By that time, he began training in Wushu Sanda and was making quick progress in this direction. His mentors, who were looking for the most talented guys, made sure that Magomed Sharipov was a permanent participant of all tournaments, both on his home soil and the international scene. And getting a little bit ahead, they made the right decision, because eventually, Zabit won the Championship of Russia, then trophies in European competitions and the World Cup. And give me a tip, how do you focus so easily? Like sometimes, for example, when I was performing in Dagestan, I was nervous. I thought like, if I get beat, people see it and be ashamed. Yeah, if I get dropped, it would be bad. How did you get focused? I just did it myself. Somebody helped you or all your own? No, no, on my own, brother. You know how it goes. You just simply go in there and know that it's the same as sparring. Sparring or competition, just go and do it. Like there's no difference. Yeah, like to have fun. The, the most important thing is to have a playful attitude. What's the difference, brother? You know, our guys have this thing when they worry about how the fight goes. Oh, what would people say? Such intense work from early childhood brought Sabit to a level that allowed him to perform in mixed martial arts at any given moment and build a successful career. And after some time, that is exactly what he did. The result of my entire journey is a battle, sometimes a battle with myself. It's also very important who you're going through this journey with. I always had only the best people beside me, my brothers, and I'm forever grateful for that. Professional Sport Well, I was watching fights in my childhood. I wasn't really interested in the UFC as much because I was a striker myself. I didn't like the fussing on the ground. I mostly watched K1, the tournaments in Japan. That's what I followed the most. The official start of our hero's professional career in MMA dates back to a fight on May the 9th of 2012. Back then, at the local Odessa Golden Cup tournament, Zabit shared the ring with an athlete from Kazakhstan, Zumagaldi Zetpizbaev. All the stereotypes that at this period always accompanied the Dagestani fighters were shattered in a split second when Magomed Sharipov went for an attack. Ninja started pressuring his opponent right from the very beginning, throwing singular attacks to different levels. Dodging the spinning head kick, the Kazakh felt that things got tough and initiated a convergence. Now we see a lot of talented guys from the mountains who can shine on the feet, like Shara Bullet for example, but back then there were only a few such guys and our hero was one of them. Figuring that Sabit's defense is on par with his striking, his opponent immediately separated. At the same time, Megamed Sharipov only forfeited his confidence and continued to pressure. Soon, the sequence repeated itself. Zumagaldi, working as second number, resorted to defense in hopes to catch his opponent throwing another kick and taking him to the ground. But he wasn't able to secure a takedown yet again. In the second round, the Kazakh fighter also tried to utilize his striking skills, which led to him getting knocked down pretty quickly. Just look at this, he lunged at Zabit and instantly went down on the mat. Soon, the referee moved the fighters from the corner closer to the center of the ring, and the fight picked off right where it stopped, on the Kazakh's beat down. But Megamit Chabripov let him get up, doing him a disservice with such a gesture. And in fact, the situation did not change in the slightest. The opponent of our hero was simply multiple levels below Zabit and couldn't oppose his style at all. Another exchange and a takedown attempt moved him to the corner and the Dagestani started hovering over him like a fearsome flyer, channeling a threat. The further turn of events was not hard to predict. 
Very soon, Zabit, who finally felt out his distance, exploded with a lightning fast back fist, which led to another collapse of the Kazakh and the referee's countdown. Zapisbaev did not really want to receive any more damage and surrendered, while our hero earned a TKO victory in his debut. I started with freestyle wrestling as well, but it would have been an overstatement if I say that I'm a free wrestler. But yeah, I started with like two to three years of training, and then transitioned to Sun. I have a free wrestling background and it really helps me a lot. The next appearance of the Dagestani Ninja on the MMA radars happened in July. Unfortunately, it wasn't possible to find video footage of this event on the internet. So let's just limit ourselves to its mere mention. His opponent was Timur Bolotov, who couldn't handle the prospect's onslaught and lost by unanimous decision in the conclusion of two rounds. The third fight of Zabit on the professional scene took place in October at Pro FC 42. Back then, he was up against Abakim Yunusov, a Russian athlete, sambo artist, and master of mixed martial arts style. This time, fighters clashed in the cage instead of a ring, which was a bit smaller. But Magomed Sharipov stuck to his style and began to pepper his opponent with sharp kicks right from the very beginning. The very first takedown attempt from Yusinov wasn't successful. Zabit was cool, calm and collected, which allowed him to feel the distance and get through his opponent's defense. He was switching stances, attacked with lunges and overall looked better in the stand-up than Abakim. At a certain moment, the latter managed to drag Zabit to the ground with the help of the fence. However, one wouldn't say that he acted more efficiently and decisively in this aspect. Ninja kept his guard up and didn't allow himself to get beaten down on the ground or while searching for an opportunity to execute a submission. Either way, Yunusov managed to keep his opponent down till the bell. Between the rounds, it was clear that one of the guys was a lot more tired and it happened to be Abakim. Magomed Sharipov was just getting started and couldn't wait to continue fighting. The next five minutes began with an instant pressure from our hero and strikes to different levels. In response to that, his opponent gathered the last bits of his energy and spent it on trying to hold Sabit against the fence. But like in the previous round, he failed to do that due to an illegal groin shot. When the fight resumed, the whole scenario made another lap. Attack from Magomed Sharipov. Then a desperate takedown attempt from Yunusov and finally some work on the ground. After some time, the referee put the guys back up on the feet because an exhausted Abukim wasn't in a hurry to resort to any particular actions. When Zabit realized it, he doubled his pressure and started to do the most interesting stuff, search for ways to win. Based on the fact that his opponent jumps for the legs at any given opportunity, the Dagestani ninja went on the offensive. After reacting to another lunge from Yunusov, he grabbed his neck and cut off the oxygen. The surrender didn't take too long and our hero earned his third victory in his professional career. By the way, in May of 2014, these two fought each other again, but this time at the Combat Sambo Tournament. Zabit won in the exact same way he did the last time. After completely draining his opponent, he choked him out in the middle of the second round. We move on. A high fight IQ supported by a mastered striking technique and powerful wrestling, that's exactly what makes Zabit an outstanding fighter of the new generation. The fact that Zabit is an incredibly spectacular fighter in the world of combat sports was evident from his first MMA performances. A young Dagestani with wild techniques in his arsenal, which he executes in a real fight inside the octagon, while the majority of athletes prefer to win by taking the least risk as they might lose, while a coveted champion ranking and good money is on the line. On December the 2nd of 2012, Zabit Magomed Sharipov had his fourth professional fight at the next stage of Pro FC Grand Prix. The way Zabit started the fight immediately set the tone for the further action after the Dagestani ninja attacked his opponent with two spinning kicks in a row. 
not slowing the pace down, he added middle and high kicks that forced Abobov to converge as soon as possible. The first takedown attempt wasn't successful, but it was only the beginning. After another kick from Zabit, followed by a hand combination, Iftihor grabbed on his leg and tried to execute a submission. As we found out later, it didn't present any threat. The Dagestani successfully defended himself and cut the fighter from Tajikistan. After the doctor's first examination, the guy was allowed to continue. But let's be honest, we know what such a professional like Zabit was going to do next. Further action doesn't evoke anything but delight. Spinning kicks, high kicks, flying knees, boxing, whipping back fists, everything was landing. One could read an utter helplessness and despair in the eyes and body language of Abobov as he simply couldn't get close to Zabit and stop this storm of powerful shots. And mind you, it was only the middle of the round where the Tajikistani, who got wobbled multiple times, couldn't touch his vis-a-vis -vis at all. Another portion of back fist, the ones you can see only if you don't blink, sent Ifiko's body down once again. Eventually, fighters found themselves on the ground where they tested each other's jiu-jitsu skills for almost the rest of the round. The Tajikistani prospect didn't take even one step towards victory and between the rounds it became clear that not only he was beaten up but also exhausted. However, to be fair, we should also mention that our hero spent a lot of energy by the end of the round himself. The next round began in the same way as the previous one ended. Work on the ground. Abovov used all of his energy and experience to take the initiative but Megamed Sharipov's defense was at the highest level. Almost so, after the middle of the round, there was an episode when Ninja almost snatched the finish via armbar together with his opponent's hand, for which we should give Ifiko credit, as he managed to endure pain and escape a dangerous situation. We won't beat around the bush for too long and just say that the guy spent the rest of the round on the ground until the bell. Ultimately, the Tajikistani couldn't properly recover and he wasn't allowed to continue, which brought the Dagestani his fourth consecutive victory in their professional career. While being very peaceful, in the cage, Zabit starts to resemble a movie hero like the legendary Bruce Lee with an incredibly vast set of skills and techniques of Eastern martial arts. It's worth mentioning that he doesn't just win a fight, he crushes his opponent from the first to the last minute. There is another big advantage of Zabit that manifests itself in the cage. It's his amazing composure which plays a significant role in achieving the victory. In the April of 2013, there was the finale of said Grand Prix at Pro FC 47, where our hero faced a guy named Igor Igorov. At first, a two-time hand-to-hand combat champion and a representative of the Army's sports team was fine with working on the feet against the Dagestani. He wasn't afraid of counter-attacks and kicks of Magomed Sharipov, letting him apply pressure while also openly engaging in exchanges and getting in close range. However, all of that doesn't mean that his work was more precise and efficient. It was the opposite. Speaking about the striking, Zabit had all the advantages, or as he was also called back then, Zabist. Southpaw or orthodox stance, it didn't matter. It was him who looked better in any given situation. A clear testament to that was the fact that even despite his advantage in size, the fighter from Russia, like the Dagestani's previous opponents, constantly looked for an opportunity to take the fight to the ground. To sum up the first round, Overall, Zabit properly butchered Igorov's face, made him bleed and did everything he could to physically break him. The next five minutes were unfolding in the same manner. Every shot from Zabit was taking away Igor's desire to keep going, until a certain moment. 
closer to the end of the second round, the Russian managed to find an opportunity and took our hero down. There, he used all of the strength he had only to postpone the moment of getting back up. When it was the time for the final round, Igorov knew what he had to do to not get sent to the Shadow Realm. And yes, he succeeded in reaching his goal, pulling off a huge upset. As history taught us, this was the one and only fight for the Dagestani Ninja where he suffered a defeat. After one and a half minutes into the round, when fighters got to the ground again, the Russian tightly grabbed his opponent's hand and didn't let go until Magomed Sharipov tapped. As we already said, Zabit lost in the Grand Prix final and it happened to be his only defeat in the professional career. Yeah, I lost. It means I didn't train, but you know. Now I think of this as a defeat and it was more good for me. You don't worry. There's no pressure, like if I had no defeats, there would be some pressure. Uh, from a psychological standpoint. Now when I perform, I'm not afraid of losing because I already lost. I have one defeat and it kind of eases me up. Five months later, the Dagestani prospect returned to the fighting world to demonstrate improvements in his game and get back in the win column as convincingly as possible. On September the 20th, he debuted at a new place, though it was a one-off appearance, Fight Nights Pre-Post Selection 1. His opponent was Sergei Sokolov. To everyone's surprise, Zabit's opponent was the one to initiate actions in stand-up, not Megamed Sharipov himself. Before our hero turned himself up, Sokolov had time to attack him with three low kicks until he got a response in the form of a boxing combination and a fast spinning kick. After that, Sergei became more active and tried to push the pace, to which Megamed Sharipov responded with a sweep and a takedown. It was the first time when we saw that the one to initiate a takedown and further work on the ground was the Dagestani Ninja. The last loss to the other Russian really bothered Sabit and he wanted to demonstrate everything he had in this aspect. And in fact, he managed to do that in the best way possible. After properly messing Sokolov up on the ground, soon the prospect switched to his back, grabbed his neck and immediately locked the submission choke. The win in the first round didn't take too long. Zabit successfully returned to the winning path and moved further. In November, a 22-year-old Magomed Sharipov entered the cage of another promotion called Oplot Challenge 88. He was up against a fighter named Samat Hodov. The fight started with a flashy and sound shootout. Why sound? because such sharp kicks from the Dagestani Ninja were echoing even in the opposite corner of the arena. Zabit responded to Samat's vicious low kick with a stinging kick to the body, which made the viewers experience phantom pain. This attack made Hodov converge and press his opponent against the fence, but Zabit did not let himself get taken down and tossed his vis-a-vis -vis himself. And yes, you saw that right. Samat was really fighting Magomed Sharipov in the UFC gloves. And overall, the rest of the round unfolded on the ground, where our hero was unloading big shots from the top position on the defending opponent. The next five minutes followed the same tendency of the first round. Hodov was throwing low kicks while the Dagestani was answering back with versatile strikes, landing fast and damaging attacks to different levels. Soon, the guy added some boxing, to which Zabit reacted with an incredible combination of a back fist and high kick that didn't graze him only by miracle. Generally speaking, the overall pace slowed a little bit down compared to the previous round, but our hero didn't become any less dangerous. For the most part, he was dictating the tide of the fight, peppering Samat with singular attacks and taking him to the ground whenever he wanted to. And that's exactly where fighters met the end of the round, going into the next one. In the final round, the guys spent less time in the stand-up than prior. Zabit continued sticking out his lead leg under a slicing low kick of his opponent, but at least he was answering with spinning kicks, not forgetting about hands. 
In one of the sequences, a vicious backfist reached its target and Samad tried to survive in close range, which brought him to the ground due to the Dagestani's takedown. The last round ended on the ground with Sabit applying pressure and dominating his opponent. Final result? A unanimous decision victory for Magomed Sharipov and another masterclass on his resume. Every fighter sets them up differently, but I try to do it myself. When I go in there, I think the main purpose of that is to not be afraid of losing. Many fighters, when they're afraid to lose, they can't do their best. Like in training, you do all this crazy stuff, have great sparring sessions, but in the fight, 20 to 30 percent of that doesn't work. Because you're afraid to lose, that's the reason. Beginning from that moment, the career of Zabit Magomed Sharipov went uphill. The next fight that he had in November of 2014 took place at the Russian League ACB, which was putting on the featherweight Grand Prix right at the time of the debutante's arrival. In the quarterfinals, the Dagestani ninja shared the cage with the fighter from Azerbaijan, who was on a streak of two victories and came from Pankrace, Oruts Zamanov. Knowing all the advantages of a striking technique master, Zamanov went for a takedown literally from the very start. Having a clear confidence that Sabit is incoming happened to be a trigger for him to go for the legs, but it wasn't successful and the guys got back up to their feet. From there, the Dagestani prodigy started ruthlessly beating the Azerbaijani up, who couldn't oppose such a versatile arsenal of his opponent with anything, even if he wanted to. However, ultimately they got to the ground, because this time Zabit was the one who initiated a takedown. After holding Zamanov down, he wanted to go for more decisive actions, but the referee intervened. Not sparing any energy, but his limbs which could easily get hurt from the Dagestani's further attacks, Oruts went for another takedown. And again, on one hand, he succeeded, but not in a way he planned initially. Magomed Sharipov stuffed his takedown, got behind his back and performed the toss with an amplitude suplex. Oh, suplex. Perhaps there is no point in mentioning every single action in the octagon. We'll just say that the Dagestani ninja dominated the first round, which didn't promise anything good for Zamanov later on. And luckily for him, Zabit himself noticed that the Azerbaijani fighter is inferior to him in any given aspect of the fight. So he decided to end his suffering and let him get out of there with small blood. He choked Oruts out in the first half of the second round and successfully debuted in a new league, earning a great victory in the Grand Prix quarterfinals. <laughs> And the same applies to Zabit, this exact same quality. He listened as well, carefully, trained. Though naturally, in terms of his physicality, he wasn't really all that. Well, maybe from an innate sense of fighting, I would call it a fight IQ. He has that. How does it manifest itself? Haven't you watched his fights? I have. I'm just curious as to how you would describe it yourself. It can't be put into words. How can I explain this idea? He could do things, you know, like intuitively. And just like that, depending on the situation. The next stage of this event was semi-finals, which happened in March of 2015. At ACB 15, our hero clashed with an experienced grappler, Artek Nazarian. Actually, looking at the fight's preview, one could already tell what kind of a spectacle we were about to see in the next couple of minutes. Artek went straight for Zabit's legs without any feints or other distracting moves to take the fight to the ground. However, he didn't show anything special apart from attempts to execute a choke or submission which Magomed Sharipov defended from quite comfortably. This continued until the Dagestani ninja turned on 100% and knocked his opponent down. Beginning from this moment, everything went down in a familiar scenario. As the saying goes, the second knockdown doesn't take too long after the first one. Soon, 
athletes got into the second round where Magomed Sharipov had total control of the tide of the fight. In the end, he completely drained his opponent, exhausting him with his defense on the ground and constant pressure in the stand-up. To such an extent that Nazarian couldn't keep on offering resistance and lost to our hero via TKO. The Dagestani is a specimen among all MMA fighters and a rare gem for experts and fans of mixed martial arts. For Dagestani fighters, wrestling is a true tradition. The MMA experts always argue which style suits Sabit better, ground game or stand-up. None of the parties are right in this argument because our fighter is the embodiment of versatility. He is great both in the stand-up and on the ground. That's his talent and the result of the coaching team's work. Zabit's 10th professional fight took place at the ACB20 event. However, it's worth mentioning that it wasn't the Grand Prix final, as this event was planned for the fall and the Dagestani did not want to wait for that long. He came back into the game already in June to stay active while he had such an opportunity. He shared the cage with a fighter named Mohamed Kotov. What else can we say apart from what we have already said numerous times? Poor Magomed Sharipov made so much noise with his performance that every subsequent opponent who was supposed to fight that guy didn't want to challenge him on the feet at all. The Russian used big looping shots in wrestling style only to distract a dangerous striker and take him to the ground. But that stuff doesn't work against the Dagestani ninja. He easily stopped all of his opponent's efforts, all while battering him with vicious kicks to different levels. Perplexity on Muhammad's face spoke for itself. No matter how hard he tried to keep Zabit at a close range or on the ground, the prospect was always finding an opportunity to get up and continue dismantling his opponent in his usual manner. Even when he got taken down or pressed against the fence, the referee immediately intervened, seeing that Kotov doesn't show any activity, putting all of his effort in trying to restrain a threat in the face of the Dagestani. When fighters got to the second round, there weren't any significant changes. Magomed Sharipov kept on working in accordance with his game plan, stuffed the takedowns and took the opponent to the ground himself who didn't want any of that smoke on the feet with Sabit. Eventually, it reached a point where the fight was put on pause. The reason was that Muhammad injured his hand and didn't want to continue given the circumstances. All more so against such a dangerous striker who could only make his trauma worse. All in all, a TKO in Zabit's favor and another successful performance in the professional career. Being rather tall, Zabit still had great results in other sports, especially in track and field athletics. In his native gyms in New Jersey and Makachkala, Zabit could easily beat his teammates in sprints and high jumping. He was especially good at jumping on a cube, pushing with his support and landing on that same leg. Once, when curious teammates in the gym of Mark Henry in the States measured the height, everybody was in shock. It was 165 centimeters. Any athlete of international level would envy such a result. And as we already mentioned, the next step of our hero's path to greatness happened to be the Grand Prix finale that took place in October of 2015, which identified the next number one contender for the featherweight championship. The bout was held at ACB24 event, and the other finalists happened to be Abdul Rahman Tamirov. I'm Zabit Magomedsharipov, and my style is Wushu Sanda. Many of my opponents underestimate this martial art. But look at what happened to them. Tiger Fight is the best martial arts school. The win in this Grand Prix would be solid proof of that. My opponent is Abderik Temura. He likes to finish people. You can't draw that from his record of submission chokes. He will see if he can extend his streak. The fight started in a quite unusual way, all because Temurov extended his hand as a greeting gesture, but when Sabit tried to do the same, he immediately went for his legs. Till this day, when many people talk about this fight, they call it a punishment for unsportsmanlike behavior. And it actually is not far from the truth. Prior to the fight with Magomed Sharipov, Abdul Rahman had a streak of 10 stoppage victories with no losses, and knowing all the danger that his opponent represents, he tried to do everything in his power not to lose this streak. 
However, not everything in this world goes the way we want it to. The same applies to the situation with Timurov. Because closer to the end of the round, the Dagestani ninja executed a submission choke and made the submission master tap. Zabit turned an aggressive onslaught and wrestling of his opponent against him and earned a sensational victory in the Grand Prix finale. Well, at first it was really tiring, but now I don't pay attention to that. Everybody I met on the street was telling me about stamina. It's all good though, but it really weighs on you. It's even a little bit annoying. Every second person tells you the same thing, like I have a coach. They should know that I have coaching teams and they know better that I'm lacking and where I have to improve. And I have to know that myself. The title shot didn't take too long. In March of 2016 at ACB 31, Zabit Magomed Sharipov went up against Sheikh Magomed Arapanov. The featherweight title was on the line. Alhamdulillah, the last two pounds were great. Came out of sauna in the morning feeling good. Now it's time to recover, inshallah. I will be ready. Not bad. I'm focused. The preparation took place at home under the supervision of Mansur Chikayev. We're ready to fight. I will show that tomorrow. An experienced opponent, to be honest. I watched a couple of his fights. He is physically tough. Calculated. I think we'll have a great fight. I watched a couple of his fights. He's very experienced. Experienced and physically strong. I know it was his first time making 145. He fought like a year ago. And he is a very humble fighter, you know. I asked the organization for the ACB title shot. It will be the most, like, the most important fight in my career, so to say. Arapanov was a base taekwondo and sambo artist from Ahmad team, who despite his age, presented a serious challenge due to his experience. Either way, it didn't save him from lightning fast attacks of the Dagestani on the feet, who went forward from the very start, not taking a single step back. At first, he attacked Sheikh Magomed with confidence until he turned himself on and answered back with his own skills. But frankly speaking, even such an equipped fighter in terms of arsenal variety didn't really have anything for Zabit in the stand-up. So he resorted to a takedown attempt. In turn, Magomed Sharipov demonstrated an amazing takedown defense with a perfect balance, which didn't let the opponent finish the job. The Dagestani ninja was taking away more and more space from Arapanov with every minute and pressing him to the fence which allowed him to act more creatively in terms of striking. What else can we say? At the end of the day, we're talking about a 25-year-old Zabit Magomed Cheripov who was just reaching his peak. The prospect felt like he was better than the veteran in every single department and it wasn't hard for him to knock his opponent out in the very last minute of the first round. And on top of that, become the undisputed featherweight champion. I want to thank Sheikh Magomed for a great fight. I want to thank everybody who cheered for me. For your support. Thanks, everybody. Zabit Magomed Sharipov, like almost all MMA fighters from Dagestan, thinks that the key to his accomplishments on the professional scene is wrestling. As Zabit said himself, Dagestani wrestling was a great base for his successful performances in mixed martial arts and ability to surprise his opponents. The most famous coaches in the world of martial arts believe that Zabit's wrestling skills are very high and it is the foundation of all convincing victories of the Dagestani athlete. In September, ACB put its 45th event where the new champion had a title defense against the Brazilian Valdines Silva. After achieving a higher status in the fighting community, there was also a change in perception towards our hero. Not to say that it was significant, however, a lot more people started to side with our hero, supporting him throughout his entire career. 
Even during the fight, one could hear how the crowd was screaming his name in the stands. The Dagestani ninja was feeling this support and had no other option but to justify the expectation of his fans. His opponent got knocked down for the first and last time after just half a minute into the fight. Oh, huge, huge fight. There's the turning on the referee standing over them. Silva ate a vicious spinning kick exactly at the moment he decided to wrestle, which caused him a lot of trouble. Magomed Sharipov did not let this opportunity slip away and rushed at the Brazilian with everything he had. Overall, in less than two minutes, Zabit completely butchered him, which made the referee step in. There we go! There we go! First round finished by a TKO. There you go! An incredible TKO and a successful title defense for the Dagestani Phenom. I spent about half a year in the USA with nothing. While I stayed there, I helped everybody as a sparring partner. The starting sessions every day or every other day, and not like the ones we do here. Here, it's sort of friendly. Nobody really hits each other that hard, but you attend for the first time, and you don't know anybody, so there were different situations. As history taught us, it was the last fight on Zabit's contract in the ACB League, and the fighter wouldn't extend it. There was an opportunity to transition to the world's best league and Magomed Sharipov, whose dream was to compete in the USA at huge arenas, would focus on this direction. Given that, let's remember some more words of the Dagestani Ninjas coach who shared his thoughts regarding his exceptionally talented student. Watching his fights in amateurs and then in MMA, one could say that they are unexplainable. His body, even after so many years of fighting in mixed martial arts, hasn't reached its peak conditions, it still has room to grow, he can do even more. I would even say, if there won't be any red taping from the UFC promotion, Zabit Magomed Sharipov will be honoured to wear the belt for the best fighting league on the planet. Transition to the UFC I'm Zabit and I'm ready for you see. <laughs> I think you shouldn't take risks in big fights, but I think that they won't give me very hard opponents for the first two to three fights. And I think that it's worth it for the crowd's entertainment. Because everybody expects you to deliver. You have to show them something. The time has finally come, which was long awaited not only for our hero, but also for his fans. By September of 2017, the UFC representatives reached an agreement with Zabit's team and signed him. Before that, the prospect has already spent half a year in the USA helping other top athletes in their preparation for fights. This happy news almost caught him off guard as Magomed Sharipov, being in despair, already bought tickets and was planning to go back home. Either way, all things came together in a good way. First fight, my favorite fight. Nice. Just watching him was amazing. It was like he was going to the movies. I said, Zabit, you know you're going to a fight. Ah, coach. Easy, easy. He was calm. First UFC fight. Was that thought he was going to the movies, brother? I'm like, Zabit, come on, you ready? Ah, coach, good, good, good. <laughs> it was an was amazing fight. One of the most fun I had at a fight ever. Watching him do everything. Feet, hands, knees, legs, wrestling, everything. That's MMA. One of the best MMA fighters. The Dagestani's opponent happened to be Mike Santiago, who was coming from Dana White's Contender Series. He shared the octagon with the promising debutante in September of 2017 at Fight Night 115. A flashy rookie from Dagestan won over not only the crowd of Rotterdam, but also the commentators and the fans all over the world. The Beast's debut performance was accompanied by the compilation of beauty and tricks of Wushu Sander, which did not leave anyone indifferent, with no exceptions. Speaking about the outcome, it was smooth sailing. Closer to the end of the second round, the Dagestani ninja destroyed his vis-a-vis -vis and made him tap with a submission choke. 
Uh, yeah, everybody thinking that, that I'm just only striker. I can only strike, and that's why I was trying to will wrestle with him to show everybody that I'm not. Uh, I'm a true mixed martial artist. And now I want to fight Artem Lobov. Give me Artem Lobov. Yes, he's, uh, he learned a lot from his uh, fights in ACB. He did six fights, and all fights he won. And he was a champion there. And he say he became experienced uh, fighter uh, in ACB and he was he felt that he's ready for big fights in UFC that's why he leave his belt and decided to come to UFC and he want uh, all his career now to fight in UFC and to finish his career in UFC on this level I haven't fought for a year after I defended my ACB belts and you know how it goes I haven't fought for a year you want to fight show yourself all more so. It was the first fight in the UFC. I really was charged up and hungry. Literally and figuratively. Yeah, like emotions and mindset, it didn't matter. The first fight went down exactly like that. I started flying around the cage. I didn't even know how that happened myself. We will also mention one interesting fact. When Zabit Magomed Sharipov arrived in the main MMA promotion, many people found his appearance to be very similar to Abraham Lincoln, the 16th President of the United States of America. I was compared to others as well, like Bruce Lee, Lincoln, I don't know. I personally don't see the similarity. Americans often confuse it sometimes. The next appearance of Zabit Magomed Sharipov on the UFC radars happened in about two and a half months. Closer to the end of October, the Dagestani ninja was given a Brazilian with a record of 9-1. and one. Speaking about your opponents, it's a secret or can you already say his name? I don't want to put it out. I already have an opponent. Is it a guy from the rankings? No, he's a debutante. We'll fight him on November 25th in Shanghai. And Labov says that he wants to fight him. I don't know. Uh, I actually wanted to fight him, but it seems like the UFC wants to give me a different opponent. Now fight him. At the very beginning, an overconfident Brazilian debutante tried to keep up with Zabit as best as he could. However, there wasn't any glimpse of threat for the Dagestani talent. The only thing Morales did throughout three rounds was showing the durability of his chin and other limbs because he simply wasn't able to evade all of Zabit's attacks. In the end, with 30 seconds left in the final round, an exhausted and beaten up debutante tapped in surrender, giving Magomed Sharipov another stoppage victory and a performance of the night bonus. Well, yeah, that's right. I'm kind of relaxed during the fight because I'm, uh, my background is striking. I'm, uh, I, feel, I feel myself uh, very confident in striking and the wrestling skills. I cannot name myself as a, rest, as a wrestler, but I have a... Uh, I believe I have a good skills in a wrestling too, so I'm just confident I can go down, I can uh, keep the fight on the, on the feet, so that's why I'm, I'm not too nervous about it. By April of 2018 and UFC 223, where by the way we were supposed to hear the name of the new lightweight champion, Zabid Magomed Sharipov went through camp and was put on the card. Everybody likes it I think. Now, yeah, what English? <laughs> I can't speak it, brother, at all. Our hero's opponent happened to be the American, Karl Bokniak, who was undefeated prior to his arrival to the world's best league, though inside the organization, his record was 2-2. Two and two. I mean, it doesn't matter how many fights you win. I can win 10 fights against such debutantes and they still won't give it to me. It's more important to win three to four fights against top opponents, and I can easily fight for the title. It depends on me, the opponents, and the organization. On everything, man. Any combat sports fan who is more or less familiar with Zabit's career remembers this performance of Lincoln from Fight Club really well. The beast tirelessly circled around the American for all 15 minutes and was generous with flashy moves, though Kyle felt that he was inferior to Megamed Sharipov in terms of his arsenal quality, he still tried to fight back, which delivered us, the viewers, that very dose of adrenaline and excitement from the action in the octagon. 
The prospect earned another victory inside the UFC and broke into the top 15 of the featherweight division. Please tell us what the hell was that? What was it? A fight! I had the feeling that you were on the PlayStation and your opponent simply forgot his controller. As I said, it wasn't an easy opponent. Guile is very tough. The guy has a heart, but it turned out to be what we expected. Three rounds, as I promised. I told you, I'll fight three rounds till the end. When everybody figured out that Zabit Magomedsharipov is a force to be reckoned with, his next opponent happened to be another spinning kick enthusiast from Mexico, Yair Rodriguez. A currently former interim champion of the weight class and one of the best fighters of the world's best league. This bout was targeted for UFC 228. However, closer to the set date, the Mexican pulled out due to an injury and was replaced with the American Brandon Davis. Of course, of course I was like frustrated. It was sad to hear that he got injured, you know. Many people was waiting for this fight. I was getting ready for this fight. I was calling for this fight. Uh, but it's a part of the game, you know, you cannot judge him. And uh, no one's protected from injuries. I can be injured tomorrow, he's injured. And uh, I'll only wish him the best, you know, and get healed up as soon as possible. Maybe we'll finish the history. At first, Davis did everything he could not to become another highlight on the Dagestani's resume as it looked flashy and spectacular only for the viewer. Being on the other end of these highlights is not a very fun thing. But everybody is equal before Zabit. Whether it's an opponent who had a three-month camp or a prospect on short notice. In fact, our hero earned his fourth victory inside the world's best league by a very rare submission. Sulawev stretch, which tests the limits of your tendons and causes unbearable pain. Uh, thank you very much. Of course, I'm happy, you know. Uh, I'm happy to make happy my friends, my relatives, and all the fans who was like rooting for me. Unfortunately, he got injured, as you know. We are very sorry about that fact. I hope he gets better. And when he recovers, we can put an end to it. Sure, I want to snatch that belt, take it home, make my close ones and friends happy. And I hope that it happens soon. Four fights in the UFC within a year, three spectacular finishes, masterpieces inside the octagon, paychecks, bonuses and nominations. All of that caused a big wave of attention towards Zabit and his social media. And as we all know, such things are very appreciated and generously rewarded by the world's best league. Already by March of 2019, the prospect who was hitting his prime was given a very experienced and highly ranked opponent with hands of steel, Jeremy Stevens, who was at the number 6 spot in the featherweight division. They clashed at UFC 235. I believe I'm better than him in the many aspects, in the aspects like uh, I'm taller than him, uh, I uh, much faster than him, I uh, keep distance and uh, my wrestling skills and uh, my ground game. I believe I'm uh, better in all those aspects than Jeremy Stevens. I cannot give you a prediction, you know, but the only thing I can uh, say that it's going to be a good fight. I'm, re I'm ready for a real tough fight, you know, for, and uh, we'll see what's going to happen this Saturday. A return of a skillful master of striking and a beast of fighting went to another decision. Knowing all the danger Stevens presented, Zabit was more calculated than usual, but he still used the fence and other parts of the cage to catch his opponent with different kicks. In the end, he demonstrated everything he could to get a unanimous decision victory and put his name in the title conversation. I think um, I made a, a good statement. Um, I, I just defeated an opponent, top six, I believe, and um, I think everybody knows who I am right now. And um, I think I'm ready for, um, for whoever wins the bout between Aldo and Wolkanowski. I have been in this sport for a very long time, it's since my childhood. Sure, it's a lot like a uh, fighting amateurs. I went through that, and I'm satisfied that I competed a lot and won. And I was the champion of Europe, the World Cup, the champion of Russia four to five times. I had this journey and I'm happy, and now I transition to this professional level now. I want to become the champion. When I win the title, I'll be satisfied. 
Indeed, five spectacular performances quickly put Zabit Magomedsharipov in the ranks of contenders who are just a couple of steps away from a coveted opportunity to fight for the championship. One of such steps happened to be a very promising fighter from Boston, Calvin Cater, who was on a streak of two stoppage victories and was no less tough of a challenge than Jeremy Stevens. Initially, this fight was supposed to take place in October of 2019, but later it was rescheduled for November due to the Dagestani's injury. All more so, such a flashy and unorthodox performer was given an opportunity to headline the fight night event that took place in Moscow. My team called me and said like, you're going to have a three round fight when I found out that it was the main event. I was ready for five rounds, why not? Especially when I'm fighting at home, you could arrive like five or six days or a week before the flight, he definitely would have acclimatized. I was prepared for five rounds. That's when they decided the UFC organization of my team. I said, okay, no problem, whether it's three or five rounds, because I had a great camp. He has strong boxing skills, good wrestling defense, and a good sense of distance. A good fighter, strong, tough, and also has heavy shots. I think it's decent, a hard opponent for me. The fight of our hero, which by the way was the last one of Zabit's professional career, resulted in a unanimous decision victory in his favour. Throughout 15 minutes, both fighters had time to show their best traits which couldn't help but earn another bonus. However, in terms of efficiency, the Dagestani looked better. In the end, he took his sixth victory inside the main MMA promotion, looking to get a long-awaited shot at the title. So yeah, I'm 6-0 in the UFC and obviously I would like to face the winner of Holloway versus Volkanovski. It would seem that Sabit had all the cards on the table. It was a matter of time. Keep on training, show that you are ready to fight for the title and draw attention. And for a while, nothing promised any trouble. Everything went the way it should. Tell us, why does it take so long for them to give Sabit an opportunity to fight for the belt? I think that there are certain forces in the American's professional sports that are not interested in the UFC championships going to Russia, like it was with Habib Nurmagomedov and Pyotr Jan. There is another important thing in the promotion of this worldwide organization, an essential aspect is the fighter's media presence, hype and popularity outside of the cage and it mostly depends not only on the athlete's team but also himself. Zabit is not like that. Like a true Highlander, he doesn't like to be seen. He's the same way in the octagon. He not necessarily has a beautiful fight, but a humane, intellectual and, I would add, smart fight. In every one of his fights, we can clearly notice that Zabit is not bloodthirsty, he doesn't respect brutality, blood and for him, injuries, even when they happen to his opponent, it's a personal tragedy. If there was a prize for a humane fight, Zabit would be awarded after each of his fights in the cage. Right now, Zabit is just a step away from his coveted goal, I think. He will ultimately get his desired fight against the champion in his weight class. I have no doubts that as of today, Zabit, just like Habib Nurmagomedov and Pyotr Jan were in their time, is ready to conquer an honorable UFC title in his featherweight division. After that, he will take his deserved place among the great fighters on the planet, including Bozigit Atayev, Muslim Salikov, Jankovat Belatov, Zainuddin Atayev, and many other students at our school. However, after the fight with Kelvin Kader, we ultimately didn't see any more performances of Zabit Megamed Sharipov inside the UFC cage. Sudden end. The biggest what if of them all, maybe one of the greatest what ifs in UFC history, while I'm still wearing this, is uh, Zabit. Man, that's, a, that's another one. Like he was right there. Right? He, like, was, he was right was there. Very close. He just had, had to have that one fight and then and he just disappeared. He said, I don't know what's going on with that. We won't join the forces of conspiracy theorists who have been coming up with many different reasons as to why Zabit Magomed Sharipov hung up the gloves. Instead, we'll just go over the chronology of events. The Dagestani was offered Yair Rodriguez again by the end of summer 2020. We should mention a rather important fact. From around the end of 2019, an exhausting training had an impact on the prospect 
due to which he developed some health problems. And one can't call it a coincidence that from 2020 to 2021, his team started to leak some rumors about the retirement of one of the most spectacular fighters from Russia. After some time, we found out that Zabit had some issues with his immune system. On top of that, he injured his clavicle and shoulder, which required surgery. And also, one of the fighter's main problems happened to be diaphragm spasm, which did not allow him to recover properly for a very long time. Either way, he continued his preparation for the fight against the Mexican. Closer to the set date, we were struck with the news that Rodriguez injured his ankle and couldn't perform at the upcoming event. Magomed Sharipov was not given another opponent and he went home with his team. After some time, he refused to fight Korean Zombie, didn't get his opportunity to contest the championship and wasted around 18 months for nothing. Given the inactivity and being just within an arm's reach from the title shot, he got removed from the rankings of the featherweight division where he was at the number 3 spot. When this news hit the media, many began to speculate that Zabit decided to retire from professional sport. Soon, the fighter confirmed this information himself on his social media. It's a tea with milk, eggs, cheese, butter. Yeah, I really like cheese. Even when I'm on a diet, I really want a toast with cheese. I don't know why. I like my tea sweet, of course, but then I take my bread with cheese. Sure, such a sudden retirement of Magomed Sharipov couldn't help but shock the fighting community. Throughout a few years, the fans constantly shared their opinions and speculations about their favorite fighter coming back and destroying the champion, no matter who would be holding the belt with a signature backfist or a spinning kick. But it didn't happen. The community partially puts blame on Zabit himself. We refer to his shy and different side. Unfortunately, we live in a time when it's just not enough to be an elite athlete who selflessly dedicates the best years to discipline and craft, showing the skills in the octagon. It's not enough anymore to get some privilege from the company, especially the one like UFC. They need fighters with star potential, faces that will carry the flag of the promotion for many years to come and set PPV records. History has already taught us that it's the fighters who have a ready tongue that get the biggest and most profitable fights, and Zabit wasn't one of them. He loves peace and almost doesn't talk about his personal life. Zabit, why did you end your career? Why? There are many reasons. First of all, many fights were refused from potential opponents. I wasn't able to get a fight for two years. Then the injuries started happening, then I was sick for a long time, I almost didn't recover. There are many reasons for my retirement. The biggest reason was the inability to get fights booked. The UFC wouldn't give me a title fight. The UFC promised me one thing but did another. It was more on them. They made promises they didn't keep, so that's mostly why I got upset and angry. Epilogue You're done 100%, right? Maybe you'll come back. Is there anything that can change your mind? No, most likely not. My word, I can't believe it. I'm not completely sold on that. How old are you? I'm 32. It's like when I was 29, I figured I was done. You know, I said it when I was 30, but for myself, I already knew that it was over. The professional career of Zabit Magomed Sharipov ended with a record of 18-1 on a streak of 14 victories, six of which were earned in the world's best league. What can we say? The Dagestani ninja is one of a kind who captivated the fans with his authentic sincerity and simplicity outside of the cage, and fascinated with his unmatched style and exceptional technique inside of it. The biggest what-if in the history of mixed martial arts an incredible talent who was predicted to have a great legacy as a champion. In regular life, Zabit Magomed Sharipov is the kindest human being who has all the qualities and traits of a decent and genuine person. He is always ready to help his close ones and relatives, support them in a tough hour and do everything he can. 
During his years of active career, he was a furious and unstoppable beast who had passion and fire in his eyes while earning outstanding victories in front of a stunningly loud crowd. It's not a secret to anybody that if the Dagestani Phenom had a needed desire and opportunity, he could have continued training and climbing up the rankings, which would eventually bring him to the title fight. But Zabit's humble nature could not back down on its principles and turn a peaceful and calm man into an arrogant and prideful one. Zabit is one of the most talented fighters in the world. He dedicated all of his childhood and youth to the sport, where he reached incredible heights. And if he wanted to, he could move further, but he made a conscious decision to end his active career and focus on coaching a younger generation. Magomed Sharipov is one of the few athletes who is famous in wide circles and did not let the recognition get to his head. All of his close people say that he hasn't changed in the slightest since he got famous. The fighter perceives his popularity and attention from the media as a part of the job that he has to come to terms with. Zabit is incredibly talented. If only he had the same drive as before, he would have been a superstar like Conor McGregor. He is a phenomenal fighter. He doesn't need hype and fame. He just wants a farm, animals, and to be left alone. Zabit is one of the few fighters who earned his fame not with words, but deeds, and he has the fire and desire to fight. He is just a simple and humble guy with a big heart. He is one of the best featherweights in the world who deserves to wear the belt of a champion. An infinite number of disrupted title shots because of Zabit's opponents, which wasn't made public for all these years, health issues of Megamed Sharipov, who at his peak was supposed to literally tear his rivals apart, all of that happened to be the reason for his decision to stop performing on the professional scene. Sure, it wasn't an easy decision. At the end of the day, the Dagestani is a fighter to the bone who has been competing in MMA since 2012 and achieved everything he has now through blood and sweat, including a spot in the division's top five. He devotedly moved towards fulfilling his dream to be the UFC champion. However, any patience has limits, and numerous cancellations of fights were the last drop for our hero. We're not the ones to judge and blame him, or more so, history doesn't tolerate the subjunctive mood. It is what it is, we just know how much more this athlete could give us, whose performances in the octagon did not leave anyone indifferent. But still, we can't say that the story of Zabit Magomed Sharipov is over. Of course, one of the most important stages of his life came to an end, but there is always room for a new beginning. Passing on the knowledge to the younger generation, and best believe, in the future we will see many top-level fighters coming from under the wing of the Dagestani Ninja, because Zabit was always like that, staying true to himself and his principles till the very end. You like coffee? Yes, I do. What? American? American. Yeah, just, just regular like. coffee. What to say? Did you miss fighting? No. No? <laughs> When's the biggest talk, fight? Talk English. Okay, so, okay. When's only, the only, fighting? Only, only English, okay? Okay, got you, got you. So when Last are you day. fighting? When are you fighting? I don't know.